Well, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. It is my pleasure to welcome you to this week in conversation with Eleanor Castillo Bullock and Alex Quibena Colon Olanian. As you may know, I'm Pamela Wakeman. I'm your host and the Director of Education and Artist Services at Wheaton Arts. I am a white female in my mid thirties with long brown hair and blue eyes. And tonight I'm wearing a red shirt. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. I am broadcasting from Southern New Jersey, which I recognize as traditionally the land of the Lene Lenape. Our format for this episode is a webinar. I will be monitoring the chat throughout the program for your technical and general questions. Links to additional resources provided by our presenters will be posted in the chat throughout the program. If you would like to pose a question to our presenters, please do so using the Q&A feature. Should you lose connection for any reason, please close all of your windows, then return to your original email with the link and click on that link. Wheaton Conversations is presented by PNC Arts Alive, the United Nations International Year of Glass, and the Art Alliance for Contemporary Glass. We thank them for their support. Through membership, donations, and shopping at shop.wheatonarts.org, you can also show your support. Please consider exploring these options so we continue to offer programs that are free like this. It is now my pleasure to introduce my co-host for this program, Dr. Iveta Pergova. She is the Director of Folk Life and Cultural Studies here at Wheaton Arts. Over the years, Iveta has worked with more than 60 ethnic and regional communities in New Jersey, striving to preserve and share their cultural heritage. Iveta, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Pam. Thank you for the introduction. I have to admit, I'm really excited about this event. So uh, I would like to, to take my turn to introduce our very special guest tonight. It is uh, my great pleasure and honor to introduce first Eleanor. Eleanor Castillo Bullock. Uh, Eleanor is a vocalist, choreographer, drummer, mentor, and Garifuna language translator. She's the director of Fugamaya International Arts and Cultural Division based in New Jersey. She works with local and international Garifuna people to preserve and pass on knowledge and skills related to the Garifuna cultural heritage and to share its unique music and dance with various audiences in the tri-state area, including national and international ones. Welcome, Eleanor. Thank you, Ms. Iveta. And now I would like to introduce Alex Kwebena Colon Olanian. Alex has dedicated his career to a language, whether he's working to preserve the oral and written language of his Garifuna community or connecting with an audience through the universal language of music, his focus remains on bringing awareness to the Garifuna culture and restoring a sense of pride to his people. With nearly 30 years of experience as a musician, educator and cultural activist, his work in the arts and languages has afforded him the opportunity to teach give workshops and perform at prestigious venues in the United States, Canada, and Central America. Alex is a member of the Baiko Arts Collective and former host of the popular television show, Nuevo Mundo Musical, New World Music Show. Welcome, Alex. Welcome, thank you. It's my pleasure to be here with you today. I am looking forward to your presentation and ready to listen to drums and songs. <laughs> so it is your good turn now. Um, um, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And um, we're going to begin our presentation by telling you a bit about the Garifuna is our language and Garinago is who we are as a people. Um, Many of you probably have not heard of Black Caribs. We are also known by our European name as Black Caribs. Um, so our story begin by um, in introducing to you or letting you know that most of the Indians who um, ended up in the Caribbean 
came from South America. Um, South American Indians, such as the Siboni Indians, were the very, very first Indians to um, brace the islands of the um, Caribbean. So the story or the theory of the Black Caribs or the Garifuna, it begins with the story of the Siboni Indians who were the pre-Columbian indigenous inhabitants of the greater Antilles, Antilles and particularly the lesser Antilles known today, known then as the Caribbees, but today it is known as the Caribbean. Next, please. It has been proposed that the Saboni spoke an Arawakan language and that they originated from the Guajira Department of Columbia and they migrated to the West Indians. Um, but the fact is that their linguistics affiliation and their origins are really not known. Next, please. The Lesser Antilles which was settled in the 1000 AD by the Carib Indians who came from South America, were told, were said to be warlike people than the Arawak Indians who came prior to the Caribs into the Caribbean island. During their numerous battles against the dwindling Arawak populations, the Caribs supposedly massacred the men and kept as many of their women as possible. This would explain why the men and the women today, believe it or not, we speak the same Garifuna language, but there are some words that we say differently. I'll give you an example. Uh, we say, um, Hiaru, and uh, what would you say, Alex? Oh, wuri. Wuri. Um, um, the men would say Wuri, and we would say Hiaru. That's just to give you an example. Um, next, please. This is a map of the um, Lesser Antilles, where particularly the Carib Indians and the Arawaks who came before them dominated the Lesser Antilles in the Caribbean. Um, you could see on the map, um, we have um, Mar um, Guadalupe, particularly Dominique, uh, Martinique, St. Lucia, and we, our history, the Caribs of the Central America, it was traced that our ancestors came particularly from St. Vincent and the Grenadines that you will see at the lower end of the map. Um, close to Grenada and right after Barbados, right in between there. Next, please. The story of the Black Caribs, also known as the Garinogo for the people, like I mentioned before, and Garifuna is our language. It is a unique one. And it is a pivotal to understanding their position in Central America today and also their history as the indigenous people of the island of, of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Dominica and the rest of the Antilles in the Caribbean region in which St. Vincent was one of the last outposts of the Carib resistance. This is very in, um, important and interesting because um, the Europeans, when they came to the Lesser Antilles, where the Caribs were the indigenous Indians and the Arawaks before them, they dominated and they wanted to enslave the Caribs. Uh, we're going to read a little further and we'll explain to you how that went down. Next, please. Heavy Black Carib Indians resistance prevented St. Vincent and the Grenadines from being colonized long after most other Caribbean islands had been well established by, Caribbean, by European settlements. As I mentioned before, they, the Europeans tried very hard to colonize St. Vincent and the Grenadines, um, but the Caribs, which was the name that was given to them by the Spanish, and in some books, name, they named them Caribis, as they were called, which means cannibal. Next, please. 
Um, there's a book written by Brian Edwards in 1793 um, that the origin of the Black Caribs of St. Vincent lies in the fact that a ship was wrecked in 1675 on the island of Bequet, and it carried slaves from the tribe of Mocus in Benin. We have heard that um, theory before and that story. So together with the runaway slaves from Barbados, the red caribs, which they were also known, they were known as yellow caribs, red caribs, and believe it or not, if, if any of you out there are um, Caucasians, the red and the yellow caribs, we were told, and it's in the books that they were your complexion and we'll find out why they became black caribs. Um, they produced um, offsprings um, from, the, um, from the slaves who ran away, the African slaves who ran away, and they assimilated with the um, now red and yellow caribs, and that is how we became black caribs. And Garifuna, also known as Garinago for the people and known by our language today as Garifuna. Black Caribs are a mixture of Africans the, and the Carib Indians today, even though we have heard also that because there were so many European and different um, cultures in the in the uh, that had dominated also the Lesser Antilles. Well, story says that there was a big mixture. Our language could be mixed with Dutch. Our language could be mixed with French. Our long language could be mixed with um, Spanish. Believe it or not, there are some Spanish words that we too in the Garifuna language say the same word. But here we, I understand that we are mixture of Africans and Caribs. Today, they, we are known as Garifuna, and you will find us also in St. Vincent and in Central America that we're going to talk about in a little while. Next, please. Here's a map again so that you could see St. Vincent and the Grenadines a little clearer at the bottom. Um, that is where our um, ancestors originated from. Remember, they came from South America as Carib Indians. They migrated to the Caribbean. Their name came from the Carib of the Caribbean. And those, believe it or not, are our ancestors. Next, please. The Black Caribs remained only on the island of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Dominica until 1796, when the British government deported, no, they actually exiled almost 5,000 Black Caribs from St. Vincent to an island in Honduras called Rotan, Rotan Island. Now, um, picture this they they um surrounded or gathered or or went to to take um without their uh without them wanting to be taken mothers fathers children from their land in saint vincent and the grenadines around five thousand black carriers because they didn't want to be enslaved was rounded up and exiled to the coast of Honduras in Central America. Although their last warrior, Chief Joseph Chatouillet and his army fought very hard to prevent that. Um, there are stories, there are articles, there's a, a, a big history of the Black Carib War, the first Black Carib War and the second Carib War in many of our Caribbean books that speaks about what happened to the Black Caribs when they were exiled and taken non-voluntarily out of their land St. Vincent and the Grenadines simply because they did not want to be enslaved. Next, please. Now, today, 
a handful of black caribs or the Garifuna, we are known today as the Garifuna, and we have survived on the islands from the island of Dominica and St. Vincent, like I mentioned before. However, the original Carib type Indian has been altered by many type of mixing with runaway slaves because in St. Vincent today, very few of them know their history as the first people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines who were Arawak Indians and Carib Indians, and they mixed with runaway slaves. Um, eventually, they all started mixing with each other. Today, today, as a matter of fact, just recently, the St. Vincentian have now beginning to honor their um, culture, their traditional Black Carib or Garifuna culture, they have started to now teach their history. A lot of, um, I, I would say, revelation have happened in St. Vincent today where the um, St. Vincentians are now honoring and acknowledging their Black, Carib, and Garifuna roots. As a matter of fact, I'm not sure if I have a, 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 a slide here um, to bring up the last Carib chief, Joseph Chatouillet, is honored now. He was the last Carib chief that, um, that tried to maintain the Caribs and their land in St. Vincent, but in the Black Carib War number two, him and his army lost that fight with the Europeans. And that is the time also that he was um, uh, murdered um, and he died. And be, as a result of that, the Caribs in St. Vincent didn't have a leader anymore. So uh, imagine that things had to happen. Next slide, please. So the Black Caribs spread all over the neighboring mainland and we survive today in Central America in the countries of Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, and Belize. And there are still some Caribs, Black Caribs, or Garifuna, or even Garinogu in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And they are known in Dominica as the Gal Kalinago, Kalinago, or Kalinago. Um, they too are black Caribs. And I believe that their, their name Kalinago or Kalinago is very close to Garinago. So clearly we are the same people. Next, please. The Garifuna, the Garifuna people disseminated throughout Central America. And today we have a large community in Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua and in Belize. When the Garifuna arrived in Central America, they maintained their, their culture, particularly their language, their food, um, their livelihood of fishing and farming. Um, so many of us who grew up, myself and Alex, I, I'm from Belize, by the way, I was born in Belize. Uh, we grew up with learning um, the things that Garifuna did traditionally, as a matter of fact. For example, my grandmother, who was a farmer, she made sure she took us, because she raised m me and my siblings, she took us to the farm, whereas she had um, also cousins whose livelihoods were fishermen. So they did that, um, and we were uh, privy to know that they were fishermen because it was very nice. They would bring their aunt, who was my grandmother, fish, fresh fish right out the sea. It yes, was a and my uncle would take me fishing. Also, my grandfather would make nets, fishing nets to, mm -hmm. to, to catch fish and also go fishing to bring fish to the community. Yes. And we, now, we are now migrated. Some mm -hmm. of our folks migrated uh, to, to, to these United States and we are found in major cities like Los Angeles, New York, um, uh, um, Texas, 
Boston, Detroit, Detroit we're all yeah. over and the Chicago, United Chicago States. Also. We're all over the United States today. Um, but um, there are large communities in where we just mentioned Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, and Belize. And Honduras, because they were dumped on the island of Rotan in Honduras, um, the, Hondur the, the Honduras is one of the biggest places where you can find a very, very large community of Garifuna people. Yeah, 36 uh, settling communities along the coast in Honduras. And coincidentally, when we were dumped in Central America, we were also, um, we, we started, our ancestors decided to find place where they can now find new homes. And most of them, mo mo most of them were put or they landed or they ended up on um, the shores of the Caribbean Sea in Central America. Next slide, please. So since 1796, when the Black Caribs were exiled, um, they have thrown off our British appellation, which, which they called us Black Caribs. And we encourage everyone to know us as Garinago, which are the people or plural, and Garifuna is the language that we speak, but we are known today as the Garifuna people. Um, and um, we are now, as a matter of fact, refer to Black Caribs as Garifuna. Next, please. New York City, just like what Alex just said, is the home of the largest Garifuna population outside of Honduras, which I mentioned in Central America, and the estimated Garifuna people that live in, Hon in New York City today is 300,000. And that is growing um, very, very, it's probably grown already. It's growing, uh, the population is, is growing. Uh, we are mostly in the South Bronx. We are in Brownsville, in, in Brooklyn, East New York, Brooklyn. We are in Manhattan, where Alex and I are now, Upper um, uh, West Harlem. Side. We're in Harlem. Uh, we're in Harlem. Garino Garifuna are in Harlem. And next slide, we also, please. You also find Garifuna, before we move on, we also find Garifuna in uh, Connecticut. Yes, true, and, true. And Philadelphia. In Philadelphia. And um, also New, New Jersey, Jersey, where yeah. I live. Yes, we have um, Garifuna in New Jersey. So, so the point is, we're scattered now all over um, the United States, um, in Southern Belize, and all those countries that I mentioned already in, uh, in Central America. So, uh, um, and where I'm, where I'm going with this is we are scattered now, which unfortunately made our culture and especially our language um, fall into the category that it is um, endangered and it is facing extinction um, because we simply do not live together and as a community anymore, especially those of us who have migrated to the United States. But efforts are not being made to preserve the language and pre preserve the culture by teaching uh, the young ones. Yes, the, young, the younger young, generation. younger generation. Yes, next please. Okay, so um, we come to our discussion on Garifuna music and dance. Um, Garifuna music is a ethnic music dance with African, Arawak, and Kalinago elements originating with the Afro-Indigenous Garifuna people from Central America and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. In 2001, we just mentioned this to you, the Garifuna music, dance, and our language were collectively proclaimed as a masterpiece of the oral and intangible heritage of humanity by UNESCO. UNESCO is the United Nation Education Scientific Communication Organization of the United Nations. Yes, and I must also add that uh, currently now, we, the Arawak are also known as the Lokono people. They prefer to be 
known as the Lokono people, and also some of them are are also traditionally the uh, Taino of the Caribbean. Right. Those are some early names of Indians that came from South America who were the first first indigenous people of the Caribbean. Taya, Tayanos, Taino. Tai, Tainos, I believe, um, um, moved on and some um, Puerto Ricans um, identify with Tainos. Um, and as a matter of fact, um, what was the other one? Locono. Taino and the Locono. Yes. Um, those were Indian indigenous, indigenous groups that came to the Caribbean um, in the early years. Next, please. So we just mentioned to you the UNESCO that proclaimed um, the, the proclamation of masterpiece of oral and intangible heritage of humanity that the Garifuna music, dance, language is a part of now. It was made by the Director General of UNESCO um, start and it started in 2001 just to raise awareness of the intangible cultural heritage and to encourage communities such as the Garifuna community to protect to protect them and the and the local people who sustain these forms of cultural expressions. Several manifestations of intangible heritage around the world were awarded the title of masterpieces to recognize the value of the non-material component of culture, as well as entail the commitment of states to promote and to safeguard the masterpieces. Further proclamations occurred by, by, bioannually in 2008, 90 masterpieces were incorporated into the new representative of the list of intangible cultural heritage as its first entries and the Garifuna music, dance, and language, like we just mentioned, have become one of the 90 masterpieces proclaimed in the masterpiece of the oral and intangible heritage of humanity by UNESCO. That is a very important um, for us um, because it helps us um, find ways to get funding from um, UNESCO to teach our children to hold on to our landmarks, as particularly uh, it's supposed to happen in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, but I can't pinpoint and tell you who's, um, who's in charge of that who's doing that at this time. Um, and it's also supposed to happen where we landed, which was in Central America. Next, please. So our music, which you can find in wherever Garifuna are today, we have managed to hold on to our music, especially our songs, and what we call our music genres. Uh, when you go to Belize, Guatemala, Honduras, or Nicaragua, um, maybe not so much St. Vincent because they lost a lot. Um, if you go into any community in any of these countries um, and you go into the Gar Garifuna community, you will hear our Garifuna music. Um, the drums, they play a very important role in our Garifuna music. Um, the main drum, I'm going to let Alex talk more about this, is the segunda, which is our bass drum. And our bass drum keeps the rhythm or tempo. And the, uh, uh, so I'm going to let Alex demonstrate a little bit of our segunda drums um, so that you could see and, and feel already what we're talking about, that the segunda, which is our bass drum, keeps the rhythm. Yes, it maintains the tempo and the flow of the music, actually it's considered the heartbeat. So the, the tempo is the bass beat, which is in a downbeat, and it's, it goes like this. That's just one, one rhythm or one component of the bass drum to hear the depth of the music. And then the primero, um, that keeps the improvising of the different rhythm. As a matter of fact, 
if I go like what Alex just showed you, believe it or not, those two drums are our primary music. We mentioned to you that, um, oh, I think maybe we didn't as yet. Um, our One of our genres was changed from punta to punta rock. Um, so um, punta rock is only additional instruments were added to these two drums and it became um, um, in, Impro impro improvising with all different type of um, instruments that was added to just the two drums. Right. You have the keyboard, you have the guitar, and you also use um, turtle shells, which is made famous by our artist Ben Cayetano and the Turtle Shell Band. And uh, we had maracas and also claves to accentuate uh, the rhythms and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's at a faster uh, rhythmic uh, pace, mel melody. Um, one of our uh, special um, percussion instrument is what we call shaka. I don't think we have bought one here for you today, but we use it a lot. Um, they are, um, you've seen them in many Spanish um, music. What do they call well, we them in maracas. Spanish? Maracas, right. right. They call them maracas. We call them shaka no, no, or cicera, cicera, right. Cicera in right. In our language, we call them cicera. And that's also one of our percussion music that we use just about all the time. Um, the drums are normally made by um, a hollowing out logs, tree logs, as a matter of fact, and stretch and, and they stretch out the skin, um, which is antelope skin. I think, what kind of skin the, the, is this? The bass drum is usually covered, used with um, uh, cow skin. And uh, the, the drum gives a high percussive sound uh, with the primero is deer skin or antelope, which is stretched over the wood and tightened with rope to cocoon, and then dried and placed for uh, you want to show percussion. Them? Yeah, this is the drum. This is, right. yeah, this this is, is the, the skin that we're just talking about. Right, we have oh. snares. Oh. Of, we have these lines. Sometimes they use fishing lines or guitar strings to create a percussive sound when you play. Primero, and of course here we have the, the bass drum, which is the segunda, which is the deeper sounding drum. As, as a matter of fact, this drum is very important in our culture um, because we don't we didn't talk about it here, but maybe another time. Our spirituality is focused on our bass drum. Um, as a matter of fact, we're going to go into our genre, which is the style or our music type. And we're going to talk a little bit about the different type of our music. Um, but I wanted to mention the big bass drum that we have here. We use those drums. I believe it's three of them. There's a name for each three of them. Um, and they're very, very important in our um, spirituality when we have, when we celebrate um, what we call in our spirituality, uh, a term called Dugu, which is the celebration of our ancestors. We are, we are big on celebrating and honoring our ancestors. So we want to almost conclude here by letting you know or telling you about the music styles that we do have and um, the genre or, or the type of uh, music um, that we have. Um, the music and the dance go together because the name of the music which is um, um, Dugu, like I mentioned before, it's a type of uh, uh, spirituality and a celebration of our ancestors used by this big drum. So that is a, a dance and a music. We also have Hungu Hungu, which is also a dance and the music. Then we have Chumba. Then we have Punta Rock. I mentioned that already. Then we have Punta. A lot of Hispanics love our Punta music. But I have to say here and put this on the record, Punta is Garifuna. 
We love when everybody do our punta, but punta is Garifuna dance and Garifuna music. And we also have paranda, parandero, they would call in Spanish. Paranda is, uh, is a, a rhythm or a style that's used uh, in many of the Latin country, including or just about all of Central America. And we also have a special um, dance style and music called Wanaragua. Um, you probably have heard the European name, which is Jankuno. Many of you might have heard of Jankuno, but the Garifuna name to our Jankuno is Wanaragua. So we have a rhythm and a dance uh, named Wanaragua. Um, next slide, please. I think we're going to um, get here. As a matter of fact, we, we're here. I wanted to mention these notable Garifuna artists, um, Pen Cayetano. I mentioned already that he um, added or upgraded or changed our punta music into punta rock. So this gentleman, this artist here, Pen Cayetano, he started that. As a matter of fact, he was my neighbor, lived right next door. So we were there witnessing that when regular punta with two drums changed to uh, extravagant of different music with the bass, guitar, keyboard, keyboard and, right. and those the things. Turtle. Yes, and the turtle shell and the uh, sisira. Um, Paul Nabor, um, he, I believe, is from Punta Gorda, um, uh, Punta Gorda, South, Southern Belize. Southern, uh, in Southern Belize, there are um, locations or i um, not sure what they don't call them boroughs of course that's american um but different places where mm -hmm. yes maybe regions where garifunas took um, um decided to find new homes in southern belize where they were put um and told to find homes there in southern belize include um georgetown um, um, St. Bite, Hopkins, um, Dangriga, Barranco, and Punta Gorda. So you, um, you'll hear folks tell you I'm from PG or Punta Gorda. I'm from Barranco. Me personally, I'm from Dangriga. You, Alex? Of course, you have La Buga, sorry, those in, 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 uh, in Guatemala. You have uh, the various different communities in Honduras, Corozal, Sambo Creek and uh cologne uh and others um Seba or and um and and of course in belize and those and those and now here in, in america we have those our children were born here these they're from the bronx brooklyn yes. queens and believe it or not these were the exiled black caribs of Garinago. of uh, garinago from St. Vincent and the Grenadines um, that or, originally were exiled in those 10 ships sent in the Caribbean Sea. Their, their first stop was Balisau, where the Europeans put them on an island called Balisau so that they can die. But in a couple of weeks or perhaps even two or three months, I'm not sure, please don't quote me, they went back to see if the Garifuna had died off, but the Garifuna black caribs had not all died off. There were still some that were living. They put them back on the ship and made the ship sail, sail. They stopped in Jamaica. Jamaicans didn't want them. So they landed in Rotan, Central America. Those are our ancestors and all the Garifuna in Central America that have became thousands now. Thank God for our ancestors and God who didn't kill them off. They didn't all die. We resisted and persevered. And that's why we still have our, you know, our cultural traditions to this day. Yes. Um, let me go back to the notable artist, Aurelio Martinez is also one of our famous artists. He is from Honduras. Um, his music is outstanding. Andy Palacio is one of our legends, um, passed away at a very young age, um, but he um, brought our Garifuna music globally. He took it globally. That's why you will be able to hear about Garifuna in the um, United Kingdom um, overseas. 
and globally thanks to Andy Palacio. And he also won the Womix Award World Music Expo yes. as the Artist of Peace. Yes. Um, Peter Poots Flores, another very popular artist that many of us know. Um, I believe uh, Iveta, she would know James Lavelle. He's one of our notable Garifuna artists. Um, he's done um, commercial music, re did a lot of recording. Paula Castillo, she lives also right here in the Bronx. She's well known, a well known artist. And Clayton C. W Williams, C. Wills Williams, he's a, a young um, millennial, who, um, Parandero, who is bringing up the younger generation to love their Garifuna music. I, I, I think he kind of sings to them so that they will love the music even more. Um, but for all of you out there, if you happen to know Beyonce or Rihanna, we are desperately seeking to get them to at least add a verse of any of our Garifuna music into their, into their songs, because that is the way we promote and preserve our language that is, ex, that is facing extinction. We do everything and we continue to do everything to try to hold on to our music, to our songs and to our dance uh, so that the young people, we teach it, we train them so that they will never forget so that it can live forever. So if any of you know any artists that we can collaborate with and, and, and have them, especially the famous one, Beyonce, are you there? Um, Rihanna, are you there? We would really, really love that because if our children, our younger generation, hear Beyonce or Rihanna or any of them, uh, there's a lot more artists, sing, uh, Jace, any of them, any young, you know, they if they hear Garifuna being sung, especially on the radio, that will help them say, oh my, I got to learn more of my language. Oh, that's my language. Oh, they can identify. So we encourage that and we encourage our audience to spread the word. Yes, just like how uh, we have also um, Shakira did a comedy with, um, yes. with the African uh, yes. Zangalewa for the, uh, for the soccer um, World Cup. And we also have uh, uh, other artists that are not mentioned there, like Don Cuellar, who's here in the Bronx, mm -hmm. um, John Jordao, Libaya uh, Marasa, uh, Bodoma, Bodoma, you know, and we also have uh, uh, other artists from, from yes. Belize, like Belize, uh, yes. uh, Super G, yes. Lil Jun, uh, Asiatic, yes. you know, so, so I mean, to name a few. Yes. And George Atlambe. George Atlambe. We have a lot of artists. We really do. Um, next slide, please. I think we're going into our music now. I mentioned to you our dance styles, um, which are titled um, Dugu, Hugu Hugu, Chumba, Paranda, and Punta. I'd like to, we are, we're getting ready to demonstrate our music and our dance for you. I did mention that our music when we say dugu, our dance is called dugu. When we say our music, hugu hugu, um, you see the N in the hugu hugu, it's, we don't pronounce the hum hum. It's a silent N, it's hugu hugu. Uh, so we have hugu hugu music and the dance, chumba music, chumba dance, paranda music, paranda dance, and punta. So we're going to demonstrate for you all. Before we demonstrate, we would like to know if you all, if anyone have any questions that you would like us to um, address or answer at this time. Uh, well, Eleanor, we, uh, we don't have uh, questions yet, uh, but it may be due that we forgot to remind people to put their questions in the um, Q&A box uh, for you. So maybe, after your demonstration, we will have the questions and I'll read them to you. Sure, absolutely, no problem. So let so people those... listen to your music first. Sure, no problem. We're going to demonstrate for you um, now. And I want to start with what our music and our dance um, that's called Dugu. And Dugu is, uh, like I said, when we have a Dugu ceremony, it's a spiritual dance. It's a spiritual. Most of our our music, they are like poetry, and they're always talking about our experience 
and the life that we live, give it, be it our livelihood, be it our relationships, be it our culture, our, 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 our mannerism. Those are the type of lyrics that you will find in our music. Um, so we want to start with demonstrating our, our Dugu song. Um, which... And it's a veneration and calling to the, to the spirits of our ancestors and to come and celebrate with us because it's a communication with those and giving honor and praise to those who have paved the way and left us uh, behind. Right. Most of our songs are uh, a call and an answer. Call and a response. Call, a, a call and a response for most of our songs. So we'll start with the doodle and I'll bring in Alex um, after I, I chant. We like chanting. I will start like this. I had to go to oh, oh, I had to go to Luhaya. Wahoo, Rally, oh, worry, Bagabu go. Came on the Baraga, the Barre. Came on the Baraga, Puye, Abunoga, yo, Aro. Kabasabu, the Baraga, the Barre. Yes, or Dugu. No, or not Dugu. Dugu. No, Dugu. That's Dugu. a demonstration of Dugu. Dugu. Now, Dugu. because we use it in our spiritual um, celebrations, that usually um, there they are the that is a traditional dance. We just rock because we're usually dancing it in a circle of um, celebrators. Uh, when we celebrate a Dugu, it's usually ev supposed to be every family in a family on both sides of a family. Everyone is supposed to be there. They dance that same rhythm in a, in a, in a circle and they, they move just how I, I'm moving. Uh, it's very, very spiritual because there is a, what we call a, a bouye, or there's another term. It's a healing. A, a healing uh, a person um, who helps bring the ancestors into the forefront yes, yes. of the um, celebration yes, and the ancestors when someone's spirit is very light the ancestors believe it or not gets yes, into yes. the um the the person and they if they have a message to bring they bring the message because we garifuna we honor our ancestors in that manner in our spirituality i started with the dugu to explain that um, but I want you to hear our next genre, which is hugu hugu. It's very close to the dugu, uh, but it's danced a little different, and uh, it's, it's just a little slight um, difference in the hugu hugu and the dugu. This is the hugu hugu. Baby, 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 baby,
is celebrating and and basically when we are people are exiled from the our, our homeland Yurume, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, as the islands were getting further and further away, our people started singing the song, saying we are searching, we we are moving to a land far away, searching for Garifuna people like ourselves to resettle and to make new communities. Now we move on to another genre. We're going to move on to the paranda, and I just want to say that our very the song that we're going to do for this paranda. Our very own James Lavelle, he decided to, to um, use a popular song. When you hear it, you'll know what song it is. Um, and he, uh, he always translate or transpose our English songs. All of us do that, especially him and myself. Well, when, we, uh, when we have songs that we love, we transpose them. From, from Garifuna to English, and when we sing it, we sing it together. Paranda! If we had you all in the audience, we would have gotten you up already. That's right. Keep going. Rock inside. We're going to go into what we call chumba. Yes. When our um, ancestors taught us the chumba music and the chumba rhythm and what chumba was about, it is supposed to be um, a dance that when they are doing, doing chores. It helps help you stress relief. To relieve the energy and to, to, to diffuse all that strength, all the strenuous activity for the day, and you're relieved once you finish. Pachumba. Pachumba yes. And they do it when they are working. Yes, in the fields or after the yes. uh, hard day of work. Chumba. One more to demonstrate, which is a popular punta, not punta ra, because we don't have a, our um, shaka or our sisira. We don't have no other instruments, but we only have our drums. So this is punta. Um, Thank you. 
little hard to sing with the <laughs> yeah, of course with the, the, the drums the... accentuates the, the beat or the, the movements of the dances and the bass will maintain the tempo it's a pity that you cannot see the applauses that you receive here or to hear them <laughs> we didn't but... hear a thing <laughs> Yeah, well, people seem to enjoy it very much, and uh, even someone yes. says up and dancing along. I think it was Mafalda. <laughs> oh, so maybe people are dancing as you were hoping, yeah, although yeah. they they do this in front of the screen. Believe but, it or not, when people hear the music, yeah, hear the drums, move. they move, makes you move. But that is quite true. But uh, it's good that someone knows how to dance. Yes, <laughs> so. Yes next time when we do an event in person you can teach them yeah, sure absolutely yeah, anytime better. but um they 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 have people have a few questions they popped up after i reminded them to put questions in <laughs> so i'll let you catch your breath and i'll read the questions for you go right ahead so bill uh may wants to know if um is the music passed orally in writing or in a combination of the two and also how is dance shared uh, through the generations which music the, was that the, you the, said the, the, Eastern... the music or the garifuna music how it is passed on is it oh. only orally or do you have any records or well how? the language the language itself was an oral language it was never written until um, we started um, getting educated. And when we were allowed, and I mean that allowed to go to school. So many of us are educated now and we are now teaching the language and we are now writing the language. Uh, most of the musicians that, you, that we showed you, they have written their lyrics. Uh, I'm sure they wrote it also in Garifuna. But Garifuna language is an oral language that was never written, but it is written today because we are educated enough to write it mostly in phonetics. Um, but there are linguists who know who have dictionaries out there um, that are that have written it um, to what they perceive as the right way to speak it. Yeah. So uh, basically, it's mostly um oral. verbally and very recently right. in writing from, from and the dance I would guess it's just by mimicking adult dancers just by participating right. um uh, our grandparents and our great grands passed it down our ancestors passed down the language to us and most of the language we are taught it was taught by our grandparents to each generation um, so most of us, um, as young as myself, and I take accountability, we failed our children and not force them to learn our language like how we were taught. We would speak it to them in Garifuna, and if they answered us in English, we were, or we were okay with that, instead of forcing them to also answer us in Garifuna. But when it mm -hmm. comes to the music, the music is traditionally passed on from from one generation to, to another. another. So, for example, when I I started learning the drums at, at seven years old from elders in my community and from my 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 uncles and my my cousins who already knew the, knew the rhythms and the patterns. So he, when when they, when they brought me in their circle, I would learn the, the various patterns and the techniques and how to play it properly. And that yeah, way, so that's the way we like carry on the tradition. And I myself is doing that to younger with the younger generation teaching young children the same way. Uh, well, Bill still wants to to see some recordings of Garifuna uh, music. They are, are recordings. available. They are There's recordings. a lot. They are, they are on YouTube also, so yes. you can follow it. Follow some uh, Well, Bill, um, Pam is uh, putting some links uh, yes. to YouTube. Um, uh, one is. Um, a concert, um, Garifuna music and dance. Another one is more focused on the drums. So you can check those out in YouTube. But uh, Bill is also asking if uh, religion or spirituality is the basis of the Garifuna music and dance. Um, I know it is the basis of our culture. 
um, because we are very spiritual people. And I believe we are spiritual people because of our history, um, the history of the Europeans trying to annihilate us. Usually when a culture or a community face um, tragedy and, and, and those kinds of experience, they get closer to God. And because of our African culture that's in us, um, Africans are very cultural in that they um, also celebrate their ancestors. So does the, and that what, what I believe is the Garifuna and the um, Carib Indian in us. We honor and we worship our ancestors and we believe we are, we're very religious and spiritual. Uh, and so we believe in God. So most of our life, our well being um, is spiritual. Right. Yes, so and the first example that you gave us is about that. I mean, the Dugga, uh, the Dugga, the Dugga yes. you said, and it's a connection with saying, the ancestors. Yes, mm -hmm. um, yes, yes. That, uh, to add also, we are, what we play now is traditional music and the traditional songs and rhythms of, our, of the drums and our ancestors is, 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 is basically is deeply spiritual. But we also have another component, which is secular. So just like how in Africa, you also have the traditional African drums, mm -hmm. and then you have no other music music genres now that like the high life or the Afro pop. Uh -huh. right? so I, now, I, as a matter of fact, yes. I didn't demonstrate what our young people, how they are dancing one of our, uh, our um, traditional punta. Right. Okay, they are dancing it now like this. Can y'all see that? Yeah, it's very, okay. yeah, it's very, 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 they, very, the, very, 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 Provocative. But, but, provocative, yes. But then, but then you are because they move moving into another into the secular range. Yes. But the secular and the traditional is two distinct um, rhythms. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you both. Uh, well, there are uh, many more questions coming in, so I will read them uh, one by one. Um, sure. Um, Danny Nyberg um, says, uh, thank you so much for presentation and demonstrations. I enjoyed watching you and listening to you. Please tell us more about the process of educating young people. Do you teach children regularly, like, let's say weekly or uh, during monthly gatherings or how? Mm -hmm. um, many of us, including myself, but I let me first say my generation um, I'm older than Alex, so I can say my generation, we are almost, we are the very, very last generation that speak Garifuna fluently. We failed our younger generation because we could have done more. Um, <clears throat> all over Southern Belize, before I came to America, um, Garifuna was spoken fluently by, by small children, including myself. When I came to America in 68, 1968, and went back five years later in 1973, I, had, I, have, I left with hearing young children speak Garifuna. When I went back in five years, I didn't hear not one Garifuna with children speaking anymore. So in our effort, my generation and those younger than me, some some older, we are so um, bent on trying to hold on to this language. We teach our children um, now in classes. And thanks to the pandemic, believe it or not, it was <laughs> one of the good things that it taught uh, teachers like myself. The pandemic was good because we found out about Zoom and Google Meet and online teaching. So we have weekly classes, I think it's three times a week. Um, there's an organization called Gar Garifuna Nation, head by um, Egbert Ihinia and a, a team of his, and he have a program called Garifuna University Without Walls. Um, James Lavelle and myself took on that mantle and we started teaching children, uh, young adults, and some adults um, Garifuna language online. So we do have classes um, if you're interested or if you know anyone interested, just make sure you tell uh, Iveta or Pam, they know how to reach me and we can get that. We can get them in any class they want. I'm also teaching drumming and drumming workshops to younger, younger children. As a matter of fact, I have a 
uh, over, I was, uh, about 10 sessions are coming up this, um, this, this Saturday uh, for uh, uh, every Saturday from now till August, where in this summer we'll be working with ch children from six to 15 years old, teaching them the traditional rhythms of the drums. Yes, we teach, we teach, that we do. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, well, this chimes with one uh, comment that uh, my father just uh, uh, said. Um, she finds that in Garifuna culture, it is the elder uh, elder women uh, being aged that keep the culture alive. It's amazing to see mm -hmm. them dance. <laughs> uh, and what you said, it's uh, connected to her comment, uh, but mm -hmm. now it is very encouraging that you are passing this on. I mean, yeah. you're teaching the younger people the dance, the songs, and the drums. Mm -hmm. So this is really... I have to mention, um, Iveta, um, all of August, Mr. James Lavelle and myself, we are heading to St. Vincent to do another workshop. We did one in 2011. We're getting ready to do another workshop because that is where the language um, lived. And that's where it was. It's very unfortunate today. It's not spoken in St. Vincent. So we are trying to do something about that. We had mm -hmm. a, a workshop in 2011. It was awesome. Uh, over a hundred children showed up and we teach them uh, th uh, four, th four weeks of workshop and then they do a performance. Most of the work that we do is in Garifuna and English and then they do a performance and they show what they have learned. And we're doing it again this August. Wonderful. So welcome to contributions Wonderful. and donations, by the way. I'm, <laughs> I'm plugging that in. Okay. All right. So there is another question that came from um, someone uh, anonymous um, asking, do uh, both genders, male and female, do the same dances? some serious hip action required <laughs> <laughs> yes indeed mm. well, the male have their own version but they, they comp which is complementary to the women to the females but there are certain dances that are just particularly for women and for yes like the wanaragua the wanaragua or the junkuno um mm -hmm. it was mostly or mainly for men but believe it or not women are dressing because when what once they wear the costume people cannot tell who they are. So some women who love that dance, yeah. they are dressing up uh, in our Wanaragua uh, um, costumes and they're dancing Wanaragua too. You know, today women are trying to do what men uh, traditionally did. So that it, it goes with dancing as well. Well, I guess uh, the question of this woman, uh, uh, how do you distinguish male and female style of dancing? Are there any differences, or do they? The Wanaragua is a is a very good way to to, to distinguish um, the the male dances and dancers. I um, it's difficult to tell because of the costume, but you can tell by the way a male dances Wanaragua that it's a male. And as a matter of fact, there is a part that for um for a woman to join him in, in the Wanaragua dance. Mm -hmm, so you can mm -hmm. tell, you, you can tell, but in dances like maybe Chumba, they, it, they would have to be dressed as men for you to tell the difference because it's the same style of dancing. Yeah, I just see. That the, men, the men would be more, more, more accentuating and more masculine in their mm -hmm. movement mm -hmm. and the women are more sensual and, and feminine. I see. Well, this makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> So, all right. Um, well, uh, when you were talking about teaching, uh, Daniela uh, also wanted to know how you teach dance. I mean, during pandemic, it's mm -hmm. do they dance uh, in front of the screens uh, or <laughs> how? I mean, how? how uh, do it's you just like doing aerobics. Now we have punt aerobics. We have another person by the name of Arnold Witty who's mm -hmm. doing punt aerobics mm -hmm. and taking his classes all over uh, America and Central America. Mm -hmm. and you know, on youtube also but there's movements you where you can follow along just like you do any yes. aerobics classes yes um dancing it believe wrong. it or not is easy to to do on uh in zoom um it, you you just can't be in person like to fix a leg or to to accentuate <laughs> something 
uh, but you can teach dance um, via Zoom. Well, the reason. Yes. But now we are back to in-person classes, I would Right, assume. so yes, yeah, so there's, mm -hmm. there's, there's that dance studios where people can go express themselves or in the park in the summertime, there's, there's dance circles where the drum and, and singing and dancing occurs. Ah, oh, that is great. That is great. Uh, well, uh, Michael wanted to know more about your trip to St. Vincent. Uh, mm. Actually, you didn't say, but how many how many times you went to St. Vincent to teach? This is my this is going to be my second time. I was there in 2011, but the program itself, um, the young lady that really started this program, Trish St. Hill, as a matter of fact, is her name. She's from St. Vincent. She really tried to make it an annual event because the language really needs to survive. It's a language that was given to us by God and our ancestors. And only now it's beginning to be endangered and it, it, it really is facing extinction. When you go to like a place where I was born, Dangriga, Belize, you will not hear Garifuna, I'm not lying. Not in, not on the, maybe music on the radio and that's it. They do have a school, a Garifuna school called Bulisi. Um, but in all honesty, I went to Dangriga five years in a row and I've yet to see the impact of that Garifuna school. So it's very, very difficult. However, it's very yeah, interesting what you're saying. Mm. But let me let me add, let me um, give a different perspective also because there are efforts now to preserve the culture and there are certain communities like in Honduras where young children still speak Garifuna and 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 can express themselves uh, because they've been they've been uh, 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 they haven't been too acculturated. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have certain communities in uh, in in La Buga, there's an effort also to teach the the language in in the, in Garifuna classes uh, Garifuna settings. Mm -hmm. So there are efforts now, and uh, in the by the efforts of uh, other co collaborators from Saint Vincent and the Grandines, including Mr. James Cordes, Kyla Herbert, mm -hmm. Verna Authors, mm -hmm. of course, and Tristan Hill, um, James Lovell, and Miss Ellie, and uh, and others who brought the the, 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 the workshops and the culture to teach dancing and and Gerfton music uh, they've they've gone over five seven years uh, in a row going back to to the to the Saint Vincent to bring back the language and other efforts have been done in Punta Gorda mm -hmm. like in the Battle of the Drums we can see you can look at that in in the in the YouTube every November November 19th is, uh, we celebrate the arrival of the Gerfton to the new world especially to Belize and there's efforts to, to preserve the culture and they have a drumming competition where communities from honduras and different settlements in belize come together and, and, and uh, now not to pour any cold water on that the saddest the saddest part of all of that um i speak for southern belize they um they kept up the music and the um, the music and the dance um, the songs also, but ask them to say something in Garifuna, you, they, none of them can speak Garifuna. If anything, less than 1%, maybe even um, uh, 0 0.1. It's very, very sad. That so their songs would be in English? The, no, the songs are in Garifuna. So they learn them in Garifuna. Some of the artists, they sing them in Garifuna. Some of the young artists today who sing them in Garifuna, ask them to, um, to uh, speak Garifuna in a conversation. They cannot do it. It's very, very sad. That's why efforts like what um, Garifuna what we're doing. involves is, is teaching the younger generation now and other young children to learn to speak the language. And we also have, now we have Garifuna Dictionary. There's also a Garifuna Bible. Bible. So there's methods yeah, now. I understand. And, You're and trying powering to... books mm, that, can, yes. that can encourage the children to, to, to learn and speak the language. So to answer the gentleman's question, Ms. Iveta, um, we're going again in, in August, all of August. And every time we go to do that workshop, you should see the amount of children that sign up or that register for our program, they come out in droves. So we're really looking, we're fundraising now because it does cost, it's very costly to go 
and to maintain um, um, the uh, Richmond Vale Academy in Chaka Belair has been selected as the location for the workshop. Um, but there are still some things that we're trying to work out, like mm. transportation for those who have to come back and forth, the students, feeding the children, you have to feed the children. So there's a lot of um, funding that's required. Yes, I understand. It's a serious effort. I mean, we put, uh, placed in the chat your website and people can connect you. And uh, if they want to make a donation, you will tell them how to, they can connect you directly uh, through the website. Uh, uh, if uh, if you want later on, you can put your email in the chat if people want to want to connect you this way. But um, uh, what you were talking about is um, workshops in St. Vincent and in Belize. Uh, it, uh, it's not unique for the Garifuna. It reminds me about other cultures who uh, have found out that they've preserved culture away from their homeland. And now they're reconnecting with their homelands and, and bringing back to people what they've preserved uh, abroad. This is very interesting. I worked with several artists from the Ukrainian community. They went back to teach and work with museums and cultural organizations there. Uh, very similar to what you're doing, but it's uh, uh, what you're doing is um, interesting because it's about the language and the music and the drum and the dance. So uh, I, I wish you good luck. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Iveta. And, and I wanna thank your audience uh, for the great um, questions that they, are, they have asked. Um, anytime they want to reach out to either Alex or myself, I just put in the chat my, e uh, my email address and my phone number. Uh, feel free to give us a call, reach out. Any additional questions they may have, we're here to answer that because we love to share um, our, our Garifuna culture our music, our songs, and especially our dance and our language. Anyone that's interested, um, we can sometimes talk a bit too much, but it's our way of promoting and preserving. We and have it to is promote your passion. this culture. And it is definitely <laughs> our passion. So yeah. please, please send your donations to the, uh, or call me, text me, email me. I'll be happy to, we, we are a tax exempt organization, by the way. When you give to GAME, we can give you documentation where you can um, uh, mark at the end of the year that you gave to a charitable organization, just like Wheaton Arts, right, Yveta? Yes. Yes, we are not our nonprofit tax exempt charitable org. Yes, yes. And um, actually, um, my father said it, uh, she read that the Garifuna people are 10% of the population in the world, yet they're leaders in being an example for how to keep um, your culture, I guess, alive. Yes. So it's very, very optimistic comment, I would say. <laughs> Thank you, my father. Thank you, my father. Uh, everyone can save the chat so that you will have the links to the YouTubes um, to listen more to music and dance and the drums uh, uh, Alex um, performing. And uh, if you save the chat, you will also have the contact for Eleanor if you want to, to connect with her in person. So we will have to wrap it up now. And I just sure. wanted to, to say thank you so very much. Uh, uh, this was a wonderful presentation and a very passionate one and the demonstrations were just great. I thank hope you, we'll see you again in person. Mm -hmm. Thank yes, you, Yvette. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity yes. and we, we, we appreciate, really appreciate it. Really yes, appreciate it. and thank you, Pam. Um, you're a great tech person <laughs> and um, you're, 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 both of you, you're on the ball and we appreciate it very much. Thank you for inviting us. And thank you, Wheaton Arts. Yes, thank you, Wheaton Arts. And thank you, audience, for joining us today. God bless everyone. Thank yes. you both so much for being here. I feel as though we've not even scratched the surface yes. of this topic. We could go so much deeper. Mm -hmm. I do encourage everybody um, to save that chat, as Aveta said. If you have a problem saving the chat, um, please, you can reach out to me. In, in a couple moments, I'll include a slide 
that has my contact information and you can always contact me and I can send you send you those links. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I would like to announce that Wheaton Conversations will be on summer break until September. Please check back with us on September 21st when we will be joined by Julia Zagar from Eyes Gallery along with other gallerists and they will discuss the gallery perspective towards artists and artworks. I do thank everybody for taking the time to join us. And this is my contact information. You can email me at pweichman at wheatonarts.org. And I can share any information about this um, episode if you would like. Thank you so much. And thank you everybody for presenting and the wonderful music and the history especially that preceded it was immensely valuable for all of us. For all of us. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, Iveta. Thank you so much. Yes. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Yes.